with Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Can we have the roll call, please? Chairman Swiss Kayata. Here. Councilor Berry. Here. Councilor Carson. Here. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Roberts. Present. And Town Manager McGovern. Here. And Municipal Clerk Beverly. Present. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, we have a full agenda tonight. I believe that first on the agenda is a presentation from Chris Thompson on his bridge project, on the bridge project at Gullcrest. And I don't know Chris Thompson, so... Oh, here he is. Okay. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Chris Thompson, like you just said. Um, I've been working on... I'd worked on that uh, bridge since last um, July, July 2000. Um, I started off um, just looking on the area. It was for my... Um, Eco project for, as a Boy Scout, and I completed it um, October of this year, um, October 20th actually. Um, I believe you have the pictures. Um, the asked me to We're going to pass them around to the okay. citizens okay. here too. Okay, um, there, um, I think there's like five or six pictures of the completed project. Um, it's 80, 80 feet long and five feet wide. Uh, it's located on the Goldcrest property, uh, down behind the new um, town garage uh, on Denison Drive. Um, it covered, went over a small stream in the wetland, um, which was before unpassable. Just had some old pallets covering the ground, and um, it needed to be fixed up. Um, right. Would you like me to explain any more about the project? It, it sounds it sounds wonderful, and I, on behalf of the town, I want to thank you for your hard work on it. Do any councilors have questions? Jack Roberts. No questions, but just some comments. Chris really didn't. <laughs> explain all that he went right. through with this. He uh, has been before the council, he's been before the planning board, he's worked with uh, the planning office. Um, he got uh, a number of volunteers from the scout troop to help him out. The, uh, his father was, was in the audience with him and some of the folks from where his father works were down there putting this together. It's uh, quite a, an engineering uh, feat that he pulled off. It's probably one of the biggest bridges that any individual has put in in town so far for us. And it really is a jewel, and Chris, you, you ought to be commended for all the work you put into it. Plus the tenacity, because I mean, he, he was really a year and a half going through the government process to get this thing all done. So, <laughs> just to stick with it that period of time was fantastic. Uh, while I'm here, I'd also like to thank um, everyone that helped me out, um, all the people in my troop, um, my dad, uh, who helped out throughout the whole thing, and um, especially Mr. Roberts, um, who was just speaking. Uh, who started off from me right from the beginning um, explaining what needed to be done, what needed to be fixed. Um, this is Omira, um, town planner. I don't think she's here tonight. But uh, she helped me out right from the beginning through all the planning, and Mr. McGovern, who helped out with the funding of the project. Great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Again, you. it sounds like a, a great project for the town, and you're to be greatly commended, especially for working so long and hard on it. Thank you. Thank Chris, you. just one Good question. Round of when will you get your Eagle badge? Viewing it at the end of this month, I think the 25th, so after that, I'm not sure how long it'll take. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, reports and correspondence. Anything from the councillors? <coughs> Councillor Fritz. I'd just like to um, make one comment. At our um, December meeting, the town council voted to remove the private residents from the historic structures list um, that were subject to the demolition delay. So I guess I will, from time to time, make announcements about opportunities for people who own uh, historic structures to learn about and educate themselves about how to take care of their, their structures on their own. Um, so I just want to make a mention of two organizations that particularly concentrate on historic buildings and, and help 
homeowners, and that's Greater Portland Landmarks, and another one is uh, Maine Preservation. And Maine Preservation is going to be having two, or I'm sorry, four hands-on workshops to help people uh, with their historic structures to know about owning, how to maintain, and how to restore. Uh, the um, workshops can be taken individually, and they are um, being held in Bath. So um, you can call Maine Preservation to find out about the uh, sessions, which are February 2nd, 16th, March 2nd, and 16th. Thank you. Anything else? No? Okay. Town Manager's report, please. Yeah, just a very brief report. I wanted to acknowledge, I think the council received a copy of a letter I sent to Rosemary Reed. Uh, Rosemary has stepped down as the coordinator of the bottle shed uh, over at the refuse disposal area. Rosemary was the founder of that program. It was her idea. It was originally her garden shed uh, that started uh, the bottle shed at the refuse disposal area. Since Rosemary had that idea, there's been over $175,000 in bottles and cans that have been, give, that have been given by citizens of, of the town with the proceeds mostly going towards youth groups, youth booster groups uh, in the community. I, it's been just a, a tremendous asset for the town. Rosemary uh, has done an awful lot of uh, work with the transitioning with every group, uh, answering the questions, setting up the program, and really, truly appreciate uh, all that Rosemary did, and, you know, really single-handedly uh, was responsible for an idea that eventually, with the help of a lot of other folks, uh, has raised uh, almost $200,000 uh, in just a few short years. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Are there any such items? Hearing none, we'll move on. Matt, I just wanted a little follow up here to Councillor McGovern's comments about the bottle shed, which is of course a great way for these organizations to earn money. But in Rosemary's absence on Saturday, the manager was running the bottle shed as I understand George, it. George was. <laughs> George at Whistle? No, George Schumann. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I was impressed to find out the town manager was out there sorting bottles. <laughs> One of his many duties and, and non-duties, and volunteer duties um, of this job. Okay, um, next we have the minutes of the December 10th and December 13th meetings. Do I hear a motion? Uh, so I move that the minutes of the uh, December 10th and the December 13th meetings be uh, approved as read. Second. As uh, printed. And moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, I would, before we move on to the public hearing on the uh, proposed renovation of the community center, uh, I would just like to make a brief statement um, that doesn't have anything to do with the community center. Um, there, uh, many of the counselors have uh, been out to see the properties involved with item number 80, which is the Highlands Trail connection, which um, is uh, further on in our agenda. And um, there's been a lot of information back and forth, and a number of, of the, our counselors have suggested to me that they feel they need more time and more information in order to make a fully informed and fair decision. And while it may be disappointing to those of you who have come to be here tonight, we also want to, I also want to be respectful of the time that you spend here. Um, several counselors have suggested to me by phone, just separately by phone this weekend, that, perhaps, that we should send this to workshop. I'm not sure if everyone is in agreement on that, but um, if that is what we were going to do, I would hate to think that everyone here for item 80 would have to sit here for two hours through the public hearing and a number of other items and then find out. So um, I would like to suggest that perhaps a counselor would make a motion to um, have us take an item out of order. John? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we suspend the rules and take number, uh, item number 80 out of order. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any Discussion? No. It doesn't have to be two votes, one to suspend the rules and one to then take the item out of order. I mean, I just... He was, he was okay. Okay. According to our okay. manager, that was okay the way he did it. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? 
It's unanimous. So we're addressing item number 80, which is a report from the Conservation Commission regarding the Highlands Trail connection. And there was a draft motion on the public agenda uh, vote about accepting the report of the Conservation Commission, but I will entertain any motion that um, any councillors may want to make. Mm -hmm. yeah. Madam Chairwoman, I would move that we uh, take this item uh, to the first uh, available workshop to discuss it in a workshop session and then bring it back again as soon as possible to a regular council agenda. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Can we Council include Chris. that we accept the report in, in that motion? The report of the Conservation Commission? Right. Certainly. I, it, no, I think it's receive. Right. Re receive the report. It yeah, can, can yes. Yes. Certainly, we can include that as well. That okay. We would table, but we will also accept, or not table, but send to a workshop and accept the report from the Conservation yeah. Commission it's that received. we will also study received. in the workshop. Councillor Lynch. If we send this to the first available workshop, will that provide adequate time to give notice to the interested parties and anyone in the public who wants to attend? Sure. I, I'm sure that we will make sure everyone has adequate mm -hmm. public notice. And I'm just I, wondering if that's this Thursday. I think this Thursday's workshop had already been canceled, so okay. technically it's not available. Okay. That, so that. That would give that, that at least several start. weeks okay. for people to get notice. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor? It's unanimous to send it to workshop. And again, I do realize some of you may be here for that item and may be disappointed that it will not be addressed tonight, but I, I feel that it will be better addressed in a workshop where the council can make sure it has all the facts and everything is up to date because some of the issues are somewhat fluid that are uh, involved with this issue. So thank you very much. Anybody who was here just for that, feel free to leave if you want and then, or stick around if you want. Okay, so that was item number 80. Now, um, we are here. We are going back to the beginning of the agenda. Um, we are here for a public hearing on the proposed renovation of the community center, the proposed sale of two lots, and those lots are 1226 Shore Road and the, lot, the service station lot immediately adjacent to the town hall, and then a proposed bond issue to fund the renovation of the community center. Um, before I op open the podium, um, I would just like to give a very brief, you know, two or three minute overview of what this is for uh, a brief history so that people know what we're talking about and can give it some context. And I'm going to ask Sue Weatherby just to say something very briefly to start and then we will open the, the public hearing. The Pond Cove Millworks building lies, I, I'm sure everyone in this audience knows, but everyone on TV may not know it, that it lies between, not on TV, watching on TV, um, knows that it lies between the high school driveway and the IGA parking lot. This uh, building was purchased by the town in November 2000, a little more than a year ago, for $560,000 when the owners, who were Mr. and Mrs. Wayne Murray, approached the town to see if we would be interested in buying it. Um, because of its unique location next to the school property and because the schools were facing some space needs that were going to necessitate that community services move out of the middle school basement space where they currently are, um, the town council was interested and indeed voted unanimously to buy that property. The business formerly in that building, Pond Cove Millworks, relocated a few months ago. They, they were they leased that space from the town for about a year and moved a couple months ago. They relocated to a bigger space in Scarborough. Um, and we wish George Gagnon, who was the owner of that business, well. He uh, cooperated well with us. We had a fine business relationship with him when he was our lessee, and we wish him well in his new bigger space, which he has said better serves his needs now anyways. So, um, A building committee of Cape Elizabeth residents headed up by Gil Jordan, who's somewhere out there, um, has been working since last year to put together specific recommendations 
for a community center for the use of the building to estimate costs and to determine what to do with 1226 Shore Road, which is the property that is currently used as a much smaller community center. The committee issued their recommendations to the town council in November of 2001. Um, if their recommendations go through, the project renovation will cost $1.78 million and will be financed with a $1.3 million bond. Um, and also it, part of the package, the financial package to make it work would be the sale of some town properties and a number of other revenue and expense improvements. The new center is going to, presuming it works out, is going to house the offices of the community center, small public meeting rooms, event space, community space for community services programs, and facilities for senior citizens and teens to gather together. It will enable the town to continue the extended daycare program and, and hopefully expand it somewhat for school-age kids who have no other place to go before and after school. And it will additionally um, open up four classrooms in the basement of the middle school building for the school department to use for their um, enrollment pressure that they're facing. All of us on the council and uh, many other places in town have heard many opinions about the community center and its proposed uses. Most people that I've talked to seem to think it's a good idea to have it. Um, the only concerns mentioned to me were cost related. I'm pleased that um, under the council's direction, the planning committee, the community center planning committee was able to reduce <coughs> the budget, the original cost of the project by more than $1 million um, by reducing scope and making a variety of deci difficult decisions. But I'm also pleased by the way the town manager and the community services headed up by Sue Weatherby and municipal personnel have also worked to find ways to try to make this project fundable so that the community center will have zero impact on CAPE's tax rate this next year and no more, we hope, than eight cents in the following year on the tax rate. Um, before we get on to the public hearing, I just want to thank everyone involved. Gil Jordan and his community center planning committee members, including the town council reps, John McGinty and Carol Fritz, who's put together such an excellent plan for the town. Um, SMRT, the architects, um, community services, especially Sue Weatherby and her staff, the town manager, Mike McGovern, and his staff who worked hard to uh, push the numbers around and find savings in other areas. The school board, the superintendent for their input, and finally all the citizens who have shared their opinions and their input. Um, I want to thank you all. It's, it's a credit to the town to have so many people involved, whatever their opinion, but to be involved and interested in such an important project. Um, before we start the public hearing, I just want to turn this over to Sue Weatherby to say a few brief words about community services and the building. And if you could go over to the podium, Sue. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Swift Kayata. Um, some of this probably will be redundant as Anne has done a, a very good job in, in covering many of the things that I was going to speak about, but sometimes it doesn't hurt to say those things more than once. In the past 15 years, community services has been relocated five times. We started at the high school and our most recent move in 1999 to the basement of the 1930s building was anticipated to be our final move. And in, in thinking that, um, consequently, we paid um, about $120,000 to renovate that space. So we have been paying debt service of $22,000 a year for the past four years. So it was a, a move that we thought was going to be permanent. And although it was supposed to be a permanent move, it really didn't meet all of the needs of community services. The space was certainly um, adequate. We found once we got there that the parking was extremely inadequate and actually the access for folks to come in and reg uh, register for our programs was also very inadequate. When we were told last January that that space needed to be reclaimed for school use to cover some of the bulges going through the school system, 
we wondered where we might go and um, we thought we probably had exhausted all possibilities as there was no more space, flex space in any of the school buildings to accommodate community services. And just about when we had lost all hope, um, lo and behold, the Pond Cove Millworks um, came up for sale. We thought it was a perfect solution for finding community services a permanent home based on the proposed design community services would gain a great deal of space, certainly space that would better meet the needs of, of the community. The things that would, we would gain in that space is certainly larger office space with a foyer, a welcoming foyer for people to come in and register. We would also gain an additional extended school classroom, one that we had lost this year to accommodate a sixth grade classroom. We would also have a small com computer lab that would be available for the extended school care students, um, teenagers, and senior citizens coming in to use the facility would have access to that space. We'd have an activity game room that would have the game tables set up on a permanent basis. The way we're operating right now is we move them in and out of space so that we have available space during the day, but some some table games for students after school hours. We would gain a large event space that we presently don't have. Right now we're renting space in a church in South Portland to accommodate some of our exercise classes at a cost of about $2,000 a year. That space would also be available for daytime classes, expanding preschool programs. It would be available for our seniors to gather and they would be spaces that we could rent to, to generate more revenue. Our space was also not very handicapped accessible. In order to get to the community services office in terms of handicapped access, you actually had to go through the main entrance of the middle school, find your way to the elevator, and then eventually get to the community services office. So we really weren't very accessible. We also were lacking storage space, certainly the new facility with us not renovating the lower level at this time would certainly um, allow us about 8,000 square feet of storage space, not only for our needs, but the town and school needs as well. And last and certainly not least is adequate parking. Right now we have five spaces to accommodate all of the flow of traffic that goes in and out of community services, which exceeds about 200 people per day. So certainly the parking has been very restrictive where we are. We also understand that we're facing a very difficult budget year and this project really can't move forward unless um, it can be done with little or no impact on the tax. The Community Service Center, Center Committee certainly did their part by scaling down the proposal, thus reducing the original cost of the project by about a million dollars. The remaining cost of the project is, is uh, Chairperson Swift Kayarda mentioned would be um, incorporating the sale of several town properties. We also would offset um, some of the other costs by having rooms available to be named um, for a small cost and also uh, generating additional revenues through new programs and slightly increased fees by community services. Over the past 10 years, the community services budget has increased by over 25%, yet the impact on the tax rate has actually been reduced. In 1992, we had an annual budget of just over $400,000. This past year, it was 602, and yet the net tax on the town actually was reduced by two cents. So we have a pretty reliable budget history in terms of generating revenues to offset our program growth. In uh, the next budget year, we're anticipating approximately a $700,000 budget, and this will include $70,000 for debt service and another $45,000 for anticipated operational costs, which we have not paid for in the past. Anticipated revenues of $625,000 will keep the net to tax for the homeowners at about $0.10. Cents. That would equate to $20 on a home value of $200,000, $30 dollars per year and a home value of three hundred thousand dollars and so forth. The proposed center is a facility for the citizens. Enrollment in community services programs 
exceeds 15,000 registrations a year. Preschoolers through senior citizens will reap the benefits of this building as well as the many existing and new programs offered through community services. Community services needs a permanent home if we are to continue to meet the needs and interests of all of our citizens. The Millworks building in terms of site availability, location, parking, and access provides a long-term solution for the town. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So that gives us some, some context um, for the public hearing. And I would now ask that people who, um, I'll declare this public hearing open. And anyone who wishes to speak, please come to the podium over there. Um, and please state your name and your address for the record. And um, just if, if you could try to keep your remarks brief, that would be great. Thank you very much. And I know everyone hates to line up, but it'll go faster if people at least get sort of ready for being the next one in line. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good evening, all. I'm Bill Lowell. I've worked in the Cape since 1955 and have been a resident since 1960. But this is what it's all about tonight. Someday, I will be a senior citizen. So I can take advantage of some of these things that we're going to vote on tonight. <laughs> we would like a comfortable place for seniors to gather, have lunch, which I understand the present facilities has a lot of work to be done. A place where we can have meetings, do crafts. Now we know this is expensive. And is it needed? Yes. Can we afford it? This is the debate. The Shore Road property needs help, I understand, and the present office of the community center has to be vacated. So something has to be done. Do we want to increase taxes? No. So we got a communique in the mail last week, which really gave us a good thing about what they can do and not increase them that much, as Sue also said. I think we can, so let's do it. I recommend the town council to vote yes to renovate the Farmer Farm Cove Millwork to the new community center. Thank you very much, sir. Where's the line over here? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got an independent group. Uh, there's one thing about it, it's better sitting out there than it is up there. <laughs> And you've done both. <laughs> you know, ever since I've been in town since 1954, I've been on the council for six years, and I cannot think of any time that I thought it was more important than tonight. I think you should go right ahead with your building plans on that building. I have nothing against it at all. I'm for it 100%. The reason I'm here is the lot next door. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many of you have taken your car recently and started from Jonesy's and come down slow and looked at how beautiful this is now with that space of land out on that side of the town hall. The town hall is one of the oldest buildings in town. It's a beauty. Look at it. Next time. Down here we can't do anything. We missed a vote on buying land down there, but that passed. We can't do a thing about it. We can't make that same mistake up here and let that lot go out of the hands of the town in my estimation. You take that town has about 22 feet on this side. That's all you've got is room for a car to go back and forth. Same way on this side. Don't cramp it in. Don't do something that you'll be sorry for 10 years down the way. Yeah. You've got that lot, hold on to it. It goes with the town. I feel very strongly about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I heard your <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Corey Cool, 13 Algonquin Road, and I'm on the um, Community Services Advisory Committee. And I just wanted to state that I am in favor of renovating the Millworks building. I'm in favor of um, selling the Shore Road Center and I, I don't really have strong feelings either way on the lot next door, um, and in favor of moving forward with the bond. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Sharon Roberts. I'm from 185 Fowler Road, and I am also a member of the Community Services Advisory Board and am a parent of children who have uh, used community services over the years, as well as a, an individual who's also used community services uh, as, as the services have been available through adult education, fitness center, and other opportunities. And I would also like to add my vote of support for the renovation of the community services building. I think that the council and certainly the city manager, town manager, excuse me, have done a great job of finding creative ways to mitigate the cost along with the building committee as well. And I commend you on that effort and I would encourage the council to vote in favor of moving ahead with both the funding and the renovation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Valerie Hall and I live on Broad Cove Road and um, I have to leave early and I was afraid I wouldn't get a chance to speak so I called several of you tonight. Um, I feel very strong that we should approve the community center but that we should not sell the lot next door. About four years ago I started a petition drive and um, we very quickly got, I believe it was almost 300 <coughs> signatures that people wanted that to be a town green, to get rid of the garage that was there and make a town green. And I really think that <coughs> So perhaps some of the people who say get it back on the tax rolls, when you see a parking lot there, you don't see the potential. If it were a town green, how many people would want to sell their town green? And, and I think it's a matter of pride in the appearance of your town. We keep talking about our town center plan. And um, while we could have a business there, there are other places we could have a business in the center of town. I'm not opposed, one of those people that's opposed to starting business in the center of town. But that particular lot, can't be replaced with another lot. And as Mr. Chappelle said, this is a lovely building. We've just spent a lot of money fixing it. And for it not to have any green around it at all, being you know fenced in with a uh, driveway on either side, it, it's really a shame. The town still has the potential to be uh, a, more attractive. The sidewalks, the lamps, all those <coughs> things have really improved it in the last few years. And I think this is another step in the right direction, keeping the lot. It was a big improvement when the garage was torn down. And perhaps if there isn't funding in the near future, there could be private fundraising to green that area and make it something attractive, have a flagpole, um, whatever. But I would hope you'll consider keeping that lot. Thank you very much. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Sally Cox, and I live at 23 Salt Spray, Great Lane. Uh, previous speakers really have made it easy because they said that's what I feel. Uh, I don't know how many times I've driven through New England town, and you probably have too, and said, isn't this a pretty town? And um, the reason I think that we react that way is because of a town green and older buildings that re uh, reflect the character of the town. Uh, Cape Elizabeth's a wonderful town, but we lack a town green. And I think it would be an absolute travesty to lose this one piece of land that we have that we could, with which we could create something like a town green. Um, and also, it, it, the, it, if we, with, with this new um, uh, community center, which I'm, I'm very much in favor of, um, and the landscaping there and making the environment around the town hall a little more appealing, uh, we can begin to create something in the center of town which our town ordinances really call for. And that is a, you know, a, a, an inviting, a, a center that invites people to come, to visit, to visit with one another. Uh, one that has a, an artistic coherence. A, if you look in your ordinances, I think you'll find that that is a goal of the town. And it seems to me that the cost is absolutely negligible. I think the committee's done a wonderful job, and I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out that the cost was even less, uh, because I think that the building will be in demand. Uh, the facilities will be rented. I think we could probably charge a little more for the um, daycare center. And um, there 
was something else I thought, oh, well, the rent of 1000 a month uh, is actually seems on the low side for the investment firm. They've got lots of money. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm, um, I, I'm definitely in favor. I just think we'd be so sorry later on if we let go of that piece of land. Thank you very much. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Ann Belden. I live at 56 Stony Brook Road. And I'm here tonight as an advocate for our schools and also as the president of the Palm Cove Parent Association. Um, first, I do just need to say before I go on that we have a large student body and we don't intend to give the impression that we are here representing all of the parents at Palm Cove School. We do understand that there are people that do have different opinions. However, we make our decisions based on the members who are fortunate enough to be present at our monthly meetings. And so our opinion tonight is based on those who were present at this month's meeting. Um, anyway, we did stand before you last year when you were considering the purchase of the Millworks building and we're strongly in support of that. And we, when we look at the situation, nothing has really changed in our schools. The middle schools still seriously need the space that community services occupies. And um, the PCPA feels strongly that the kindergarten really has to be moved to be adjacent or close to the Pond Cove building. That'll make a huge difference in how kindergarten parents feel and how kindergarten students perceive their experience. And we also feel very strongly that the community services has to be able to continue the level of services given to before and after school care because that's such a critical need in our community and really um, enriches the life of those families who really need it. Um, so those things haven't changed. The one thing that has is that the vision has become clearer and so many people have worked so hard in helping to make that vision clear. We want to applaud our school community be, to be as forward thinking and as creative as they are in their problem solving and especially the community services planning committee for being so responsive to our community to reduce the amount, the budget that it's going to take to make those renovations. So we want to fully support the project as proposed tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Hang on one second, Dr. Fasella. Before Dr. Fasella speaks, I just a number of people have come in late, and I just do want to announce, for those of you who might not have been here at the beginning of the meeting, that the council has already considered item number 80, which is going to be going to a workshop on a later date. So any of you who are waiting for that item, I just wanted to let you know. Thank you, Dr. Fasella. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Fasella, and I'm superintendent of schools in Cape Elizabeth. I would like to uh, first take this opportunity to congratulate the Town Council in its decision to uh, recommend the renovation of the Millworks building for community use. I know this was a difficult decision in light of the present economic times we are all faced with. The Community Services Program offers thousands of people in the community a great opportunity to participate in community activities. Young and old alike have, an have been able to participate in a program that has an outstanding reputation throughout the state. I think the community services program deserves a place to do business for the long term. On the school side, it has been a goal of the school system to house our programs in appropriate facilities in order to best meet the needs of the students. By vacating their present space, the community services would allow that space at the middle school to be freed up from much needed, needed middle school programs which have not had appropriate classrooms for many years. With regard to the much talked about kindergarten facility, a long-term goal is to place kindergarten at Pond Cove. Because of increasing enrollment at the high school, the school board will be addressing that problem much sooner rather than later. When the kindergarten was placed at the high school almost 10 years ago now, the student population at the high school was 398 students. The present population is just over 500 and will be 550 next year. Two years after that, the population at the high school will balloon to over 600 students. We will need the space that is presently occupied by the kindergarten for high school classrooms. Presently, a school board building committee is studying potential solutions, um, but with classes growing at Pond Cove School and with 620 students at the middle school, space is obviously in demand. Although community services has been a good neighbor, that space is needed for school use. The town council's decision to purchase and now renovate the millworks certainly will go a long way in assisting the schools with their space crunch. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I am Marie Prager, 19 Rockcrest Drive, um, school board member and chairperson of the school building project. Um, I, as I fully support the um, community services project and was here last year when the town council um, was in the process of buying it, I do feel that I need to mention that at the expense of the schools where we, where we are today, and I, I will not go over the things that, that Tom has just said. However, the vacating of the middle school gives us four classrooms. However, that is only for middle school use. We will need to buy portables next year for our high school students. And the school board will be coming to the town council in fall of this year for two building projects that we are looking at to start within the next few years. One will be the renovation of our high school, which has not been touched for 30 years. And the second will be in addition to Pine Cove um, to move the kindergarten from the high school space. So I'm here only to say that we, as, as the public needs to know and the town council that there are major school issues that will be coming up in the fall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Edward Johnson. I live on Mitchell Road. <clears throat> I'm here tonight to not to speak against anything or, or for it. I, I'm concerned that the town of Cape Elizabeth is getting too much into the private enterprise area with some of their doing. I received the very nice article on the, you put out regarding the new building, and when I read about the community services, uh, it said there's no place to go before and after school. And later in the same article, it says they may have to increase the fees to the daycare, daycare program closer to the market. I, I think they should be getting the market price for the JPS Center, and as a taxpayer, I shouldn't be subsidizing that at end of business. And I, and I don't think anyone would be interested in competing with the town and the daycare business if it's being subsidized by the taxpayers. And uh, I, I just don't believe that the, the town should be getting into private enterprise. I think the same thing with the fitness center. I notice in here that the fitness center may move to the new building. I don't know, but I, I would think fitness centers should be run by private enterprise. Uh, I, I thought that someone had applied and been turned down, but in talking to Tom Manji, he said the person that applied, applied did not go ahead with building it. But it seems most areas fitness centers are run by private enterprise, and the taxpayers shouldn't be involved in that. Now, rather to, to build a building or to make a building bigger or something, they put in these things. I don't think that's right. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, other things I have in here, uh, wh why all these things should have been talked about before they bought the property, and I assume they were. That's why I wasn't here, whether we should buy or not buy the property. I assume these things should have been discussed before the building was bought, not after the building was bought and try to find out what to do with it now. But. Uh, I don't think they should be in the real estate business. I understand by the paper and by the article here, is talking about negotiating a five-year lease for the real with the uh, investment firm. The investment firm should be building the building and moving out here if they think it's worthwhile. I don't think the town should be. I'm assuming, and I don't know this, that somehow the town is going to be subsidizing that. And as a taxpayer, I don't want to subsidize that. If they want to move out here, all right, they should move out, pay their way, but. Uh, the same with anything that's, that's done on that basis. The private enterprise should be able to take care of themselves. You know, I wonder if next maybe they'll be in the gas business because you own what used to be a gas station. You know, maybe you get into real estate business. There's a lot of money to be made in real estate. And I hope you don't get in the grocery business because I was in that one time. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's just the idea of, of staying out of private enterprise. The other thing is that they talk about uh, rooms that be available in this two building. I think we have enough rooms around here. We have a new uh, public works building. We have a new fire police department. From what I've read in the paper, there's a lot of nice rooms in here. We have a town hall that has meeting rooms. 
We have a library that has meeting rooms. We have schools that certainly in the evening must have some rooms available in their gyms and their other rooms. Why do we need to build more rooms? Now, I understand that that's maybe a byproduct of buying the property, but we do have, I think, plenty of rooms for the amount of meetings that we need to have in this town. Uh, I don't mind paying for the police and fire or the public works department or schools, but I don't like to pay my taxes for subsidizing the private enterprise and the business. So I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Frank Miles. I live at 243 Bowery Beach Road. Uh, from, 1990, from 1988 to 1993, I was the high school principal at Cape Elizabeth, and I happened to watch community service in its first three moves around the high school. And I think it's important to say that uh, every time they've moved, uh, and I know they've moved sub subsequent to that uh, two more times, they always make the space they're in so attractive that the schools turn around and covet that space and find a very <laughs> real need for that space. My point in this is that I hope this is the last move community services has to make. I think that they deserve a permanent home that is not about to be uh, used again when schools have pressures on them. Uh, I happen to be the principal of high school when we had the 398 students referred to. Uh, when I became the principal, we were, I think, in somewhere around 450, and we could chart, as, as you can in the schools, what the size of the school was going to drop down to, and then we could see it going right back up again, as it has over the next um, seven or eight years. So that I, I think that the, the fluctuation in the school population has moved community services around a bit, and I hope that we can find them a space where it will not affect them uh, on a permanent basis. That said, community services, it seems to me, has developed an extraordinary program, which this community needs to applaud and support, and I know we have done that regularly. It has so many activities that you simply can't count them, and I think it serves all of its citizens, not just school-aged children, but it serves uh, retired people like myself and, and a number of other people in the audience who are citizens of the community, who use things like the fitness center and some of the meeting rooms and many of the educational programs. I think it's very important that we continue that, that we provide a, a wonderful space. You can count on the fact that Sue and her staff will make it very attractive, and you will all say, hmm, what else could we use this for? Don't you dare do that. <laughs> Leave it alone. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Joe Foley, and I'm from Spoon Drift Lane. First of all, I want to say I'm in favor of your community center project. I think it's a good idea, <clears throat> but 10 years ago, Mike, uh, we started the Main Street 90 project, and then we went on from that to the Town Center Committee. And as you can remember, we went to the Sheraton, uh, the Eastland in Portland, while we had the Northeast Regional Planners come up with some very outstanding ideas of what to do with this whole area as we looked at what to do with the town center. Very exciting ideas. Some of them are very far out, not attainable. When I look at what you're doing tonight, I would like to ask you to reconsider what is going to happen to the Shell property. I think you'd be giving away an excellent potential for some great opportunities to enhance the center of this town. And I can't believe I'm saying that because <laughs> I'm looking at a couple of things. I'm looking down the road where this town is going to have a reassessment of the town and it's going to have a major impact on us taxpayers. And there are probably only two other more conservative people in the town of Cape Elizabeth, one of them sitting <laughs> over there, Rick Chappell and the other is probably Billy Jordan. And so I'm not one who advocates spending money. But I think we'd be making a mistake if we did it. If we get rid of that shell property, I think there are a tremendous number of opportunities that we could look at. And 
I think it would be worth the expense, whatever that might be. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> yes, ma'am. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Kathy Perkins. I live at 215 Mitchell Road. Um, I want to thank the Town Council for having the public hearing for this community center. Um, I am on the Community Service Advisory Board and I was also on the Building Committee for the Community Center. Um, I just have a couple of quick things tonight. Conservatively, 250 people per day will go through the door to the new community center. That's very conservative. This center will serve a true cross-section of the people that live in Cape Elizabeth. It is a center that will also serve the diverse needs of our community. The town council did the right thing by purchasing the Mill Works building. The town council did the right thing by putting together a building committee that worked for a year and a half, doing a lot of soul searching with regards to the needs of our citizens. I have faith that the Town Council will move forward with the right decision to build this much needed community center. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Jerry Petroselli. I live at 38 Wildwood Drive. Uh, I've lived in town not as long as the early speakers, but for more than 30 years. And I agree with uh, all but one of the speakers here that this is something that needs to be done. Uh, it also seems to me that this is a time to recognize that uh, the community services program isn't going away. It's a community asset, a uh, community treasure. It has to be someplace. And so you can do it right or you can do it wrong. And you might as well, given that choice, I think, do it right. In making these kinds of judgments, I think that a town needs to be thinking at least a quarter of a century or a half a century down the road. Next year's tax rate doesn't matter. We have an obligation as a generation to take our turn in maintaining and preserving and improving the store of civic assets. Other people built this building. We have to take care of it. We need to build things. We need to pass things on to the next generation. This building, if it's even halfway properly done, is going to be serving people 20 and 30 and 40 years from now. And it ought to be done in that spirit. This is a great nation, this is a great town, and a dime on next year's tax rate is chump change. We should do it. I don't have any strong views about the property next door, but I do know that keeping it is going to be less likely to be regretted than disposing of it, and somebody ought to work that a little harder if they can possibly find a way. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'm Tim Thompson. Uh, I live at Six Pine Ridge Road. And uh, I'd like to just uh, add my uh, uh, strong support of this project. I think it, it's just, it's probably another example of how uh, through good planning and good decision makings, you can arrive at a, at a decision like this and it's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, it's got minimal impact on us from a tax standpoint. It provides some solutions for long-range problems like space for the schools. Uh, it's, it's going to take this property that uh, we now own and, and make it into a beautiful piece of property. If, I was very impressed with the, the architectural design that's been put together so far. Uh, it's gonna make that whole uh, entrance going into the high school um, uh, a very attractive addition to our town. Uh, I'd also like to speak in favor of the program because <clears throat> as I looked at the community services that they provide, uh, I think I've been involved and my kids have been involved in every single one of these. The only one I haven't participated in yet is the senior citizen program. And <laughs> I guess they're, they'll be ready for me when I need those as well. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is a, a, a interesting when you look at this, um, the uh, the way this community service program has been uh, growing. Uh, the other thing I'd want to speak in, in favor of tonight is, uh, and give my thanks, is the people that we have in uh, community services uh, are just terrific people, very dedicated, work hard. Um, we'll probably have to pass another bond issue somewhere down the road when Sue Weatherby retires, because we're going to have to find about five people mm. to replace her. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I very, very strongly approve of this uh, as our town continues to grow. I'm sure you'll see com community services continue to grow. Uh, 
They provide services that are just critical, these before school and after school uh, child care program that they have, which I also used for my kids when they were growing up, are very important to people that have to get up and go to work. Uh, they have, to have, to play, have a place for their children before they come home from work. And uh, it's just one of those critical services that we provide. And we provide at, um, uh, you know, I, I think their, their pricing uh, for that program is, is, is very fair. I don't think uh, you'd find that uh, people would certainly comp complain about it. I don't think they're underpriced. Certainly, I think uh, the way Sue has tried to run her programs over the years have been to provide a service that probably wouldn't otherwise be available to us as citizens because private enterprise is not going to come out and do some of those things, or they certainly would have been in the, in the marketplace with them. Uh, but community services around the, the, the state, around this area, um, are growing. It's not something we're, we're certainly not uh, the only ones that are doing this, but our program's a model. It's, it's a model that other towns would aspire to, to do as well. And I'd just like to uh, uh, also thank you for all that, uh, that you've provided for this town uh, in the past, and, and hopefully we can continue to move forward with these good decisions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Noreen O'Connor, and I live at 274 Mitchell Road in Cape and I'd also like to thank you for having this meeting tonight regarding the community center. When my family moved into town two years ago, our introduction was um, at the Pond Cove Middle School, and the person that spoke to us was Sue Weatherby um, as new parents being introduced to the school system, and I took a great deal of comfort in having her introducing um, the town to us um, and discussing at that time also what community services could offer. It's a great comfort for the new members of our community to have a service that is provided um, by Sue Weatherby and her staff. In fact, I think that they deserve a building, um, not unlike what other people have said tonight, that is going to be permanent, that they don't have to keep moving around. That way, more of their effort can also be put into um, not having to think about, is there another move ahead of us, and what is that going to cost? Um, I also think that what um, the gentleman said about um, the gentleman here whose name I don't know, um, who lives on Trundy, I believe, thank you, um, about the preservation of the land next door. Um, land is a wonderful thing to have. Yeah, okay. And when a building goes up, it's there for quite, maybe quite frankly, a long period of time. So I urge the, the town council to think very carefully about what you do with that piece of property. Um, it's in your charge. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Have we got anybody else? Just briefly, could I ask Sue to come to the microphone? Sue is often canonized for all the great work she does. And I, <laughs> but I also know she's the first to give credit to her staff as well. And, could you introduce the members of your staff who are here this I, evening? I would love to do that. Um, <laughs> certainly, <laughs> <laughs> our success is, is due to a great deal of, of their efforts. And, and as you know, if you have seen us in operation, um, there are no parameters around our job descriptions. Everyone does everything. So it um, gives me great pleasure to introduce my staff, um, the assistant director and the who serves as the director of our daycare and also our summer program, Janet Hoskin. Uh, sitting next to Janet is Pat Dubois. Um, Pat has a couple of roles with community services. She's the scheduler for the all famous, um, not so pleasant transportation system. So sometimes she feels like the complaint bureau, um, but Pat does a great job with that and uh, she also, um, is part of our support services. So, um, Pat, if you would stand, thank you. Leslie. Uh, Leslie Young. Leslie is the new member, newest member of community services, and she serves as our receptionist. Um, she also runs a few of our preschool programs. Leslie. And certainly, last but not least, Karen Allen. Karen. Is Karen here? She's my dad. Oh, Karen. 
Karen is in charge of our after school enrichment program. She does the scheduling for the picnic shelter at Fort Williams and um, she is in charge of the senior citizen program and that program has actually grown from uh, four members when we started in our very first year to over 200 members. So um, she plans to have the pool and fitness center. Oh, Lisa. Well, I thought we were separating community services and <laughs> municipality. So, um, also we have our pool and fitness center staff here tonight, and I'd like to recognize them. Our facility administrator, uh, Lisa Petroselli, <laughs> and our fitness facility supervisor, Susan Janicek and a staff member in the fitness center, Karen Hamlin. Is there anybody else here? And all of the others that work um, in that facility on a part-time basis. Thank you very much. Well, I see no one else waiting to speak at the podium, so I will declare that this public hearing is closed and we can proceed onward. The first item uh, on our agenda is item number 72, the proposed sale of 1226 Shore Road, which is also known sometimes as the present community center. Do I hear a motion? Madam Chairman, I would move that. <laughs> Speak up, Henry. <laughs> Move that the town manager uh, be authorized to obtain an independent appraisal for the potential sale of 1226 Shore Road in Cape Elizabeth and to market the property at the higher amount of the appraisal or the town's assessed valuation. And the sale of the property shall include the town retaining an easement for pedestrian and vehicular traffic of the existing driveway. Runs down the side of it there. Uh, any option agreement? Uh, our purchase and sale agreement shall be subject to town council approval. This vote is conditioned upon the town council approving the new community center. Second. In item 74-01-02. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? <laughs> yes. Only to the extent I'd like to say that uh, in our committee, our discussions came up what the potential use of this building would be vis-a-vis -vis community services. Um, and I believe it was the unanimous recommendation of the staff, Sue particularly, um, and of the committee that this, this building would not serve any useful purpose for community services as long as all those functions were contained in the new Millworks building, right. so it would be essentially surplus um, space and would not serve any need for community services. Thank you. Councilor McGinty, any further discussion or comments? No, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of item number 72? It's unanimous, 7-0. Thank you. Moving on, item number 73, the proposed sale of 316 Ocean House Road, uh, which is the fir firmer, yeah, former service station lot uh, next door to Town Hall. Madam Chair? Yes, mm -hmm. Councilor Fritz. Um, I'd like to move that 316 Ocean House Road not be considered for sale at this time, so that it might be considered further as a village green as recommended by the comprehensive plan. I'll second so, that motion. So your motion is to retain it. I just want to make sure we know what the motion is. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Councillor Carson. <laughs> I um, have given this quite a bit of thought, as, as some of the council probably knows. I was on that uh, earlier Main Street Committee, which was the then town center when we came up with the town center. Of course, we had plans at that time that we would be able to use some of the land across the street from the shopping center. That land is now privately owned and it's unable to be used. I've given a lot of thought, of, thought to this. As you know, I was chairman when we decided, the council, when we decided to buy the millwork building. I thought it was absolutely essential that we own that building, given the space needs that we have, and it was the perfect place for the community centers, uh, community op center operation. However, at no time did I think that, that I would be forced into selling 
the service station lot in order to make that happen. And I, I certainly will not threaten, I have no intention because I have support, of course, the community center location in that building. But we have always, ta I have always talked uh, since this most recent time that I've been on the council that we needed to do something to this building. We've spent all this time on the historic structures ordinances in this town, and this is one of the most historic structures we have. When you enter into Route 77 and you're going out to the state parks, to the restaurants, whatever it is, one of the first things you see when you come up over the hill is this building standing up there. And I've always wanted, since the council well knows, I've tried for the last two or three years, all I want is a little green on either side of the building. But there are several other things that I want. I, I, for that piece of land next door. We now have one of the most famous foot races, uh, I would say, in the country now, and that is the Beach to Beacon race. I've always wanted to think that at some point we could have a village green, a center, where people visualize Cape Elizabeth. Look what Falmouth is doing in their center, what they've done to improve the Route 1 corridor, which is strip malls, but try to improve it for a town center. Scarborough continues to struggle constantly to find a town center, which becomes Oak Hill, where they have a town hall and schools, but it's just an intersection of main roads. We don't have, we used to have two centers here 100 years ago. We had a center at that end and a center at this end. But now things are here because all of the schools are here and the libraries here and the shopping's here. I think it is so vital that we follow what we set out to do, and I think actually Jerry Petroselli was on that committee maybe too, Town Center Committee, well anyway. I think it's absolutely vital that we try to create a, a place, a green place, something green that is around this building, around on this building, but also over there. I've wanted to, and I was chair of that committee many years ago when we placed Joni Benoit's statue in front of the now library building, which is a wonderful place to put Joni Benoit's statue, but it isn't seen. It isn't seen the way we wanted. And I worked closely with the artist on that, and um, it was a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful statue, but it isn't seen. But to now have it seen by 5,000 international runners as they come down this section of road, to me, would be very important. Um, we march every year, and this year it was bigger than ever. Even before September 11th, our Memorial Day parade was bigger than ever. We marched to a very nice place, a green over in front of the school. But I don't think that if you asked 500 citizens in this town, that they'd know that that's where the war memorial is and that that's where we march for Memorial Day. When I grew up in this town, the, the center of the, the green in this part of town was where the key bank is. That's where the honor roll was for the people who fought in the war. And that's where there was a green space. There was a large rock there, but there was green space there. And that's where you entered into this part of the community. I think if we sell this piece of land and we allow it to be built on that we will no longer have control over it. I'm not saying that, I mean, it would be my dream not to sell the building, but to make the decision tonight seems that we haven't given it a fair thought. I've been trying, you know, to have a plan. I really would like to do that, but if I try to imagine what some part of that space may look like as green space with Joni's statue, flag, benches, planting, shrubs, and a war memorial, and a center for people to go for this town, I really think it's vital. We've seen in the last three or four months the sense of community that people have. You have a, you don't know always, the community is not always centered in the schools. I mean, people who have children, their whole life is taken up with their children in the school and what goes on and driving back and forth and going to events. But after that, there's another life. And it's, and it's this feeling of sense of community. And I, I just would feel really rotten if we would make the decision to sell that lot before we've given some thought to what we can do with it. So I uh, agree with Councillor Fritz. We have, we do have, um, although I know that one of the councils feels it's not important, but because times have changed, but the first time that the petition went out to decide what to do with that came with a questionnaire in 1998 from the Cape Courier. What should we do with the land next door? What should we do? Should we buy it? Should we sell it? What should we do with it? And there are 288 responses to keep the piece of land, to tear the station down and to keep the piece of land. I think that's a lot. I've been in this council a lot of times in a lot of different terms here, and I don't remember 288 people signing a petition, not even with the sewers, which was the biggie. So I, I, I am urging my council to 
to think about this piece of land in a different light. I, I was even pleased to see that almost everybody came here for the community services, but several people also mentioned not selling that lot. And one of the phone calls I did receive today is that that people, we've been talking, we the council in the town have been talking about the community center all this since we bought that building over there, but we haven't been talking about selling this piece of land. And she called me up and she said, you know, I can't be at that meeting. And I didn't know about it. I read this thing that came out for the community center, which was a really nice document, but I didn't even read, didn't even get the part about selling that piece of land. It was only until somebody else called her and said, did you see, they got in there selling the piece of land? She went back and looked. She said, so I get this on Friday, it went on notice to me, I didn't realize it, and now it's Monday, and I can't be at the meeting. So I feel that we're really pushing that piece a lot. We have always talked about 1226. We've always known that that was part of the, the formula, but we did not always know that this was part of the formula, and I feel that we haven't given it the right amount of time, we haven't given the citizens the right amount of time to talk about it, and that uh, I urge my counselors to support this motion to not at this time sell uh, the lot next door. Thanks. Thank you very much. Is there further discussion? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Henry. Madam Chairman, I was on the first town council. And I remember in 19... First town council ever? The first town council this town <laughs> ever had, ever since... <clears throat> before that, they had selectmen. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that, Henry. 1967. And in 1970... Uh, there was a committee that worked very hard to uh, develop a plan to uh, put the uh, Fort Williams into high-rise housing units. <clears throat> and uh, there was a great deal of lobbying and politicking that went around. They thought that would be a wonderful idea. And I said no. And I cast the deciding vote in that uh, particular <coughs> excuse me, uh, council vote against that because I was looking at the future use of Fort Williams. And I don't think there's anybody in this room tonight or in this town that thinks that it would be a good idea to have high-rise housing in Cape Elizabeth in Fort Williams today. And in that same spirit, I think we have to look ahead to what might be used, uh, that, that property might be used for in the future. We don't have to sell it today for a few pennies. We have to keep it for the future. And I think this motion is very important. <clears throat> because I can hardly talk anymore, <clears throat> I'm going to stop, but I am very strongly in support of this motion, as well as the community center. I think that's uh, what, the, what the community needs, and we'll vote for that. Somehow we've got to make that without selling this. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Councillor Lynch. Yes, thank you. I um, was not on the council or the town center planning committee that wrote this wonderful report in 1993, but I did go back and read it and have been thinking a lot about it. Um, the town council has been meeting uh, in workshop with the town manager and Sue Weatherby and her staff and the building committee for many months and um, for many months has been discussing selling the property next door to uh, the town. So it's not something that has come up at the last minute. I realize the public is only just learning about it and uh, that's why we're having a public hearing that's why people have been emailing and calling us um, but I went back and I read the town center plan and it strikes me that the sale of this particular piece of property on this side on the north side of the town hall is very consistent with the town center report and if I can just read from that town center report um, there was indeed a recommendation that there be a town common or green space. Um, but in fact, the recommendation was that the open space should be located in the area between town hall and the shopping center and be connected to pedestrian pathways. The idea, at least as I read it in this report, and it goes on at some length in other parts as well about that particular location, was that this area would be a pedestrian area between Town Hall and the shopping center. There are, in fact, six schematics in the Town Center report. Um, and I really want to um, say, especially to Mr. Foley and Councillor Carson, it, it, you did a great job. There are six schematics that show where 
would be an ideal location for the village green. Not one of them includes the lot, I'm turned around, on the north side of Town Hall. And I think that's because if we place a green area there, the pedestrian traffic will be from Town Hall to the bank. It won't be from Town Hall to the shopping center or Town Hall to the schools. So um, from my way of thinking, in fact, the sale is very consistent. The other thing that the Town Center report stated that the town center is the location where retail and commercial uses targeted to residents should be encouraged. No other area of town has the access, history of commerce, compactness of development. It went on to say, retail activity is important to a village area by adding vitality. So I've thought long and hard for many months about this. I've gone back and I've read that town center report and I feel that, in fact, we're grasping at this particular lot because it's here. But it is not the area that was identified through a lot of work of citizens and town councilors. Um, and I think we really ought to um, respect the work that was done and the locations that were identified. Um, I think it's also important to recognize the state of finances. One citizen earlier said that the tax rate next year is not important. I beg to differ. I hear from other people in this town that the tax rate next year is important. And if I can just take a minute on that issue, we're looking at, we, I think we learned today um, that the state has uh, said that they will be cutting approximately 600,000. Uh, town manager, you can correct me if I'm wrong, was it 584? 586. 586 from the um, uh, school aid. That's a serious, serious cut to our school budget. We're looking at a 19.1% increase in the county budget. That goes right to our property tax bills. We're looking at an increase in excess of 20%, I believe, for health care costs for town and school employees. These are significant numbers. Um, we had a workshop a couple of months ago where we learned that if we maintain town, just to maintain town services, we're looking at probably a 10.1% tax increase. So I, for one, believe that the tax rate is important. It's important to many, many people. I also believe community services is important. But we've looked long and hard at how to finance community services so that that project can go forward in a way that will, the costs will be mitigated. Um, if this particular lot were in any of the six areas identified in this report, I would support Councillor Fritz's motion. But it's a lot that is not going to be conducive to pedestrian traffic and it is just crucial to the financing of the community services plan. So I think um, we can sell the lot consistent with the town center report. Uh, there are and will be other opportunities in the future. I believe that sincerely. And so I will not be supporting the motion. Is there further comment, discussion? Councillor Fritz. Um, I guess what I, I take is even more important than the town center plan that um, Councilor Lynch was referring to is our town's comprehensive plan, which um, clearly recommends that there should be a clearly identifiable vi vi village center and that that be a focal point of the community. And it points out that we have no village green, the town hall is the municipal center of government and that that green should be near the place. It talks about actually acquiring land adjacent to the town hall to create this center. At that time, we didn't own the parcel on, on this side of the town hall. So it was speaking of trying to purchase a parcel on the south side. Um, but the, the essence remains that we need a village center and that it's appropriate around the town hall. So I think we should retain it. Um, and 
I mean, Consular Carson was so eloquent in expressing the, the vision of what that um, parcel could be that I don't really need to repeat that, but I really appreciate people coming tonight and, and saying that that's an important thing, and I really, uh, to keep the parcel, and I think we would be very short-sighted in um, selling it, as, as someone said, uh, that it, selling it is something we might regret. Keeping it, we're not as likely to regret. Um, I think that I, I'm very concerned about the, the upcoming discussions on the budget and the potential lower revenue that we have to deal with. And, and I think we have some serious um, looking at all those issues. But I um, would be will. I mean, I support the community center project and will be willing to um, increase the tax rate for that that major year, that early year, by three cents in order to keep the lot next door and, and retain the potential to um, improve the town center. Thank you very much, Councillor Fritz. Any further comments? Jack? <laughs> Councillor Roberts, sorry. Thank you. Um, in some ways, I, I have to agree with Councillor Lynch in that the, uh, the three cents is going to be a major issue this year. Um, with all the other things that she cited, I was going to mention those as well. And in some ways, we kind of have the cart before the horse. I won't do anything to jeopardize the uh, moving forward with the community services building. And I wish I knew exactly that we had at least four votes to do that, irregardless of what happened next door. But I'm, I guess I'm getting the sense that we, we do have the four votes to proceed, and I'm seeing some nods, so maybe that helps me out a little bit. Um, but three cents is going to be a big issue with a lot of people this year. It really is. Um, I'm hearing it in the, in the store and everywhere else. But the lot would be there for another year if we did not sell it this year as long as we don't necessarily take it totally off the table, I'd be certainly amenable to referring it to a study committee to see just exactly what it is that would be appropriate for, for the use of that lot, whether it be for a green space or whether it be put it back on the tax rolls, which a lot of people have indicated. The lot may be uh, large enough, in fact, to do both. I can see us putting the traffic on this side as two-way with no parking eliminating the, the driveway on this side completely and using the shore road access as the second way in and out. And then by doing that, we could uh, carve, perhaps carve off a section of that lot and, and serve both masters, if you will. We'd have a green space and some property put back on the tax roll. I will support, so having stated, stated that, I will support uh, at least postponing any action on that lot uh, but I do want to see it go to a study committee. Uh, I don't think we are, that we should be making a final determination here tonight on that. And again, it may solve that three cents next year. I suspect next year's budget's probably not going to look any better than this year's. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor McGinty. Well, there's no one <clears throat> more concerned about the tax rate than myself. I've voted for one tax increase since I've been on the council, and that was to renovate the pool. So I have as much concern as anyone about the tax rate. However, I've thought about this long and hard, and uh, uh, I think Councillor Carson uh, articulated very well um, pretty much my feelings about that lot. And so I will be supporting the motion. Um, and I think that this is going to be a tough budget year, and three cents is three cents, certainly. But sir, perhaps we can make that up in other budget uh, areas rather than uh, by the sale of this lot, so I will be supporting the motion. Uh, thank you, Councilor McGinn. Councilor Lynch. I'd just like to uh, make two other points. The um, draft motion was not to authorize the sale tonight, but only to authorize the town manager to market it. Um, I think that would still be in order. And I, I want to reframe the issue on the three cents. It's not three cents. It's 200000 plus tax revenue every year. $200,000 this year would go to cover one-third of the cut that we're experiencing, we're going to experience for the school. So I'm motivated um, by not just the tax rate, 
but making sure that we have quality schools and also I'd like to see a green space that's consistent with the town center plan, not one that's inconsistent with the town center plan. Thank you, Councilor Lynch. Councilor Carson. Uh, I think I'd like to just respond for a second about the town center plan. Clearly we, we knew when we planned the town center plan that it was going to be south of us. That land is now privately owned so that it will not be developed. That changes to me, the town center plan. That is no longer available to us. This is available to us. Um, and also, I still feel strongly from the phone call, especially the, which I hadn't even thought about, is the fact that the people, the 288 people who signed that document who said that they wanted to keep that, do not maybe understand that between last Friday afternoon when they got their mail and this tonight, we're taking a vote on something that they are not able to respond to. So I, I'm hoping that we can uh, support Councillor Fritch's motion to not sell the property at this time and that we can then begin our plans to see what, if, if it's either this year or next year, but that we can look at it. You all, you all know I'm preaching that, that I, I've been waiting a long time to try to do something around this historic building and, and, I, and I still want to do that. So I hope you can support Councillor Fritz's motion. Thank you, Councillor Carson. Any further discussion? Well, I'd, just, Fritz. I'd just like to comment on, I, I don't think we could get $200,000 for <laughs> that property. Um, so it would be something less than that. And, and so it would be $20,000 approximately that we would have to borrow in addition, if I'm correct. Um, and that would mean three cents on the tax rate. Uh, yes, yeah. would you clarify that, please? <laughs> yeah. Council, um, Manager McGovern. Right now, the, the proposal for the community center is a project that a total of $1,775,000. Of that, if this was not sold, you'd need to bond uh, $1.5 million. If it, would, if it was to be sold, you'd have to borrow $1.3 million. It's a 200000 shift. Uh, there is no, in the budget year that folks are talking about, the most alarming one coming up, there is, there is zero impact because we're only proposing to pay interest on the community center and not principal. So th th there would be no impact to retaining that property during this next year uh, where, where uh, the budget's coming up. Although, uh, you know, I think as, as uh, Mr. Johnson, my former neighbor, pointed out to me, you know, if we didn't spend it on this, we could use it for something else, so there's always impact. Uh, that does, so in the following year, it, it would have a, an impact of three cents on the tax rate, uh, or, and then it declines thereafter. That's $20,000. Uh, it'd, it'd be a principal and interest cost of 151000 versus 131000 Thank you. Any further discussion? Um, well, I'll throw my two cents worth in, even though you won't get two cents from it. But um, I've made a few notes for myself here listening to everybody speak at the, at the public hearing and back and forth on the council. Um, and this is obviously a very difficult issue. I can see that the councillors have struggled with it and I know the people uh, that I spoke with on the phone today um, were conflicted about the issue also. Um, and the reason we're also conflicted is that we're facing three competing values here and we can't have we can't fulfill all of them at once all are legitimate important community needs and, and by those needs I mean first of all having a beautiful town center the village concept our town center plan that's one uh, need or one value that many people in town share I would probably say the majority of people in town share and it's very legitimate it's very important and I'm all for it I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, the second important legitimate need is for community services to find a home and to have um, a place where it can serve the citizens as it has done so well and will continue to. That's also legitimate. I've heard a few people, a couple people, speak against the community services um, building doing the new center. Um, and people of goodwill can disagree on these issues. I can't argue with them that taxes are not high. Um, I can't argue with them that uh, 
we may be providing all sorts of services that they don't feel are necessary, but perhaps I feel are necessary. So that's the second thing, to provide community services um, with, with a home that um, adds so much to our town and frankly also, like the schools, adds to our property values. I, I have heard some people say that one thing that keeps them in this town and that attracts them to this town is having a great community services organization. So that's a second important value. The third important value, and just as legitimate and just as important to the community at large, is to keep taxes as low as possible. That's very legitimate because the, the, um, the economy is going through some tough times now. We're in a recession and just as the town is facing decreased um, earnings on its investments and is feeling expense pressures, so are many other people out in the community and they're, they're telling me so when they see them at Jonesy's and at IGA and all sorts of places. They're very concerned about the taxes and can they afford them. And even the increase of a couple cents or two or three cents is very, very difficult for some people to bear. Um, I have been struck since I've been on the council. I've learned things about Cape Elizabeth that I never knew before. And what I never knew, because I was lucky, was that there are many unfortunate people in town who are really living on the edge. And I know that they are concerned about being pushed out of their homes because they can't pay the taxes. So those are the three needs, the beautiful town center, the community services that we know and love and want to continue to have, and keeping taxes as low as possible. I don't think we can have all those things at once. They compete with each other. And as I said, people of goodwill can have different views of the relative importance of those three things. All three are important. Um, where I come down on it is that even though I believe a town center is critically important, I don't think that the lot next door is exactly what we need. Um, it may not be perfect, it may be perfect, I don't know, but it's not that it's bad, it's just that I don't think it's as, as important as a new community center finding a home for community services which serves got all our citizens, you know, from little toddlers up to senior citizens, and it provides space for um, the school department to have classrooms. Um, and then secondly, the second important need is with regard to taxes. Taxes in Maine are the highest on a per capita basis in the nation. I've seen several studies that show that. I mean, we all feel the pinch. Um, I do believe people in Cape Elizabeth get good value for their taxes with their property taxes, our, t our tax property tax money stays here in town and it, it pays for the services that we use. It's not sent off to Washington or sent off someplace else so we can't keep track of it. But that being said, I don't think we can keep raising taxes um, or we're going to lose the general support of the town. People, some people will have to move out. It's a crushing burden for some people. Therefore, I will not be, even though I like the town center concept, I will, I think the other two things are more important and I will not be supporting Councillor Fritz's uh, motion to retain it. I believe we would not be giving up on the lot by selling it because we still have the protection of the regulatory process. We have the town center plan which would ensure that anything proposed to be built there would have to meet what I feel are pretty strict town center rules. Um, nothing can be put on the, could be put on that lot that wouldn't fit with the town center zoning regulations and that also didn't have the approval of the planning board. So I realize this may be disappointing to some people and I have a feeling I'm going to go down in flames counting <laughs> noses here, but I really think that community services and keeping taxes lower are more important on a relative plane than that lot next door. Any further comments? I think we need to move the question. It's been moved and seconded to uh, retain the, the lot at 316 Ocean House Road. All those in favor of retaining? Two. Five. All those opposed? Two. The uh, proposed retention passes. Thank you very much.
Okay. Moving on. We're almost there. Um, item number 74, <coughs> consideration of a proposed new community center. And we, hmm. have, we have a draft motion here that's pages and pages long, and I don't think anybody making this motion would have to read the whole thing. I think the numbers are going to have to be reworked. Yeah, it just if I might, if the councillor wishes to make this motion, I would suggest that our references to 1.3 million be changed to 1.5 million, yeah. and the reference to 400,000 from the sale of properties be changed to 200,000. Mm -hmm. And we do expect to get more than 200,000 from the sale of those properties, but that's the, the minimal that, that the whole fiscal package is based on. Councilor McGinty. <clears throat> Make a motion. The table of the town council hereby approves the renovation of 343 Ocean House Road into a new community center and appropriates $1,775,000 to accomplish the project. The $1,775,000 includes $1,500,000 in anticipated bond proceeds, $200,000 from the sale of properties, $50,000 in donations, and $25,000 from the Community Services Special Revenue Fund. Cables of the Town Council also hereby thanks the Community Center Planning Committee for their efforts in proposing this renovation and acknowledges the contributions of SMRT, uh, municipal and community services staff, in assisting the committee. I second the motion. It's been, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's been moved and seconded. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Any discussion? I'd just like to acknowledge the members of the planning committee, if I might. Certainly. Um, as though I'm sure Carol and I would like it. to take all the credit for it. Um, <laughs> we're far too humble for that. Um, Gil Jordan, Kathy Perkins, who spoke, uh, Andy Strout, Mike Walsh, and Kara Jordan, who were student representatives, Mary Jean Mork, Elaine Mullaney, and Jennifer DeSena, who were school board members, and Judy Rowe. We're all on the committee. Thank you very much. They do certainly deserve our commendation for all the hard work that they did. It was difficult at times. I was at several of those meetings, and it was heavy labor, but I think they came out with an excellent result, and I want to thank them on behalf of the town. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, any further discussion? Let's move the question. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to just say let's take a one-minute break because I'm sure a lot of you are going to want to leave now. Thank you very much. Um, we still have a number of things to get through on our agenda, um, so I would suggest we listen up. Um, item number 75. Proposed bond resolution for new community center. Um, and I presume we should change these numbers from 1.3 million to 1.5 million. Correct? Right. Do I hear a motion? Okay, somebody's got to make a motion. <laughs> I'll make, let me make a motion. No, no. Somebody's got to make a motion. Not, yeah, I'm, not I'm read the whole. Are we moving item number 75-1-02? Yes. yes, we are. Oh, uh, you want me to read that? Uh, you don't have to read the whole thing, no. Can we do it by title only? Sure. The yeah. town council authorizing the issuance. And just read the, read the you know, first couple of lines, the title line. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 5772 of Title 30-A of the Maine Revised Statutes and all other authority thereto enabling, and in order to provide funds for the cost of the following project previously authorized by votes of the Town Council, and the cost and expenses related thereto, the Town Council of the Town of Cape Elizabeth hereby authorizes the Treasurer to borrow on behalf of the Town up to $1.5 million in principal amount as follows. Is that right? And do you want to read each of the figures or uh, just one? I, well, skip off the as follows. Don't have to, don't For the renovation of Pond Cove Millwork Building into the Town Center facility. I second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? I hear none. Shall we move the question? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 
Item number 76, the lease of space at 343 Ocean House Road to Edward Jones Investments. Councilor Chairman, Ch Chairman, <laughs> whoever I am. I don't, is this the appropriate point for me to mention that the uh, party that we are proposing to lease this to is a member of the Rotary Club? I have no fiduciary or oh. financial interest in it, but I don't think I have any conflict, but I just wanted to at least raise it. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. I don't really Does see anyone think you have a conflict? Okay. And everyone knows that I belong to Rotary, too, so. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. McGovern, do you want to say anything about this? Yeah, I, I would briefly, yeah. Uh, in the first floor of the house section of what will be, what I can now say, will be the new community center. Uh, this is, there's approximately 13, 1,400 square feet. It's proposed to lease a thousand of it to this Edward Jones Investments and the balance of the space would be separately leased, again, generating additional revenue. If you note the final line, the lease shall be informed acceptable to the town attorney, the town manager, and the town council chairman. While there is agreement with Edward Jones on the, uh, the amounts in the lease, we have not seen the final lease in its final form. And there's, there's particularly one issue there that could still derail this. Uh, and, you know, I, I do want to point that out. If, if for any reason this was derailed, you know, I still feel confident that we could get a similar lease from another individual not jeopardizing it. And what the issue involves is that Edward Jones needs to be able, through a satellite dish, to uh, send signals back to the home office. And we want to be sure that the satellite dish is with, in keeping with our, our town center regulations, in keeping with the FCC requirements that at the town center regulations were in conflict with it and in, in keeping with good site plan and that's the one issue that I'm still nervous about. It was my understanding until the department head meeting this morning that the outfit who was working for Edward Jones looking at this satellite dish had spoken to the code enforcement officer and he indicated that he had in fact not gotten a call from them. So you know that is uh, the, the language of the form shall be acceptable to the town attorney. We do need to make sure when this is finally done that, that this satellite this dish issue uh, is done in a way that's, that's fully acceptable to everyone is at the end is in keeping with our ordinances. Thank you very much. Did somebody make a motion? I, I don't think anybody's made a motion. Mm -hmm. I'll move it. Okay. Do I hear a second? Mm -hmm. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, moving on, we have a second public hearing, and this one has to do with requirements for annual renewals of earth material removal permits. Uh, so I'll declare the public hearing open, and anyone who would like to speak can step to the podium and please identify yourself, name, and address. Hi, I'm Neil Murray. I'm the son of the owner of the quarry, which is in reference. Could you just flip that up? Thank <laughs> you very much. Um, I would just hope that um, um, you consider passing this amendment um, based on the reputation of the past 15 years of the permitting process. To my knowledge, there hasn't been any complaints or any safety issues raised with the process there. This whole thing would actually cause, you know, less paperwork for the town and us as well in the permitting process. So that's why we're going for the longer permitting process. Great, thank you. And could, I'm not sure everyone on TV could have heard your name because of the... Uh... I'm Leland Murray III. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else who would like to speak at the public hearing? Then I declare the public hearing closed. So we need to move on to item number 77, which is a proposed amendment to section 19-8-5 of the zoning ordinance regarding renewals of earth materials permits. And I'd like to ask the town planner, Maureen O'Meara, to um, step to the podium and uh, explain to us exactly what is being recommended by the board. 
Could you indicate what the board's vote was and what their thinking was on going with, uh, with agreeing with this recommendation? Certainly. Um, just, just to make sure everyone knows where we are, the town has an ordinance in place right now, and it's a provision in the zoning ordinance that says that if you want to remove significant, significant amounts of topsoil or rock or any kind of earth material, that you need to come back to the planning board and get a permit, and you have to do that every single year. And it, that is unique in the zoning ordinance. Other types of activities for which you need to get a permit from the planning board do not require an annual renewal. Um, things like a wetlands alteration permit, uh, a private access way permit, site plan review are all approvals that are granted with a minimum approval of one year. Some, some don't have any deadlines at all. And you're not required to come back to the planning board unless you have needed, unless you need a change to your original approval or it has been observed that you have not complied with your original approval and you need to come back to the planning board. Uh, this is different, and uh, for over a decade, uh, Murray's have come back to the planning board, and while it has been the highlight of the planning board's <laughs> annual uh, review of projects, and I'm, I'm sure it meant the same to the Murray's, um, <laughs> there has never been in that time any issues that have arisen. Uh, and so there was a request made to eliminate this requirement that there be an annual renewal. Uh, and the planning board looked at it and said, this makes sense to us because why don't we treat this like we treat any other site plan review where if they meet the conditions and they continue to operate in accordance with the conditions, they shouldn't have to come back every year. And if there is any complaint registered and the complaint is investigated and they find that they have violated any of those conditions, then they can be required to come back to the planning board. And that's why the planning board was very comfortable with with this elimination of the renewal of the permit and allowing that once you get the permit, you have conditions imposed upon your actions. And as long as you comply with those conditions, you don't have to come back every year. And, and what was the vote? Of, was this a unanimous, unanimous vote? unanimous vote. OK. Thank you very much. Uh, do, do any counselors have questions? Um, is there any provision for the code enforcement officer to make any sort of routine uh, review of the operation. I mean, you said if there's a complaint, that's obvious somebody comes to complaints. But I mean, there could be health or safety issues. I think if the, that maybe aren't being complained about, but if he went there and did <coughs> inspection, he might discover those. Yeah, well, like everything else, I, I believe that the code enforcement officer's actions would be complaint driven. Um, but it might be that one of the police officers of the town is driving down the road and determines that there's gravel that's being spewed into the road from the project from this particular site and the code officer would treat that as a complaint and go out there and do an inspection so it's it's not just a formal someone wrote a letter to the code officer and said i don't like this okay. i'm i'm sorry council uh, yes jack council roberts thank you um, Maureen, I guess I didn't have any questions of her, though. Maybe I had a wait. Did you have a question of Maureen? No. All right. Then, then you can go, Jack. Then, then I can go. <laughs> then in that case, then. All right. <laughs> Don't want to step on anybody's toes that way. Um, the issue that we have before us, obviously, is not just the, the Murray family, um, because even though they may be the only ones right now that have a, a rock quarry, if they were to sell it or somebody else were to come forward and up place and put it in, we'd be dealing with them as well. And obviously with Skip and Carol and Jim and everything else, I, I have no problem with them at all. So please don't take my comments as being personal because they're certainly not. But I feel the town is being remiss in its responsibility to at least to have an occasional review done um, of any ongoing type of an operation that lasts this long. Most of these are things Maureen mentioned. Somebody goes in, they do the project, and they're out of there, and, and, and that's it. It shouldn't be left up to neighbors to have to complain if something seems to be out of order. Um, most residents will put up with an unbelievable amount of, of nuisance or garbage or anything else before they complain about their friends or the neighbors. Well, there are exceptions, obviously, but <laughs> most of us don't want to complain if something's going on, if it's not that bad. Uh, I would like to see a, a three-year review would seem appropriate, but certainly they could live with five-year review that at that point the town goes back in or the, and or the company that's running this operation comes in 
and you have a, a chance to, to review to see how things are going, again, and, and not having it be complaint driven. I don't think that's the right way to go with anything. Um, so that, that's my position. I'd like to see us amend it to go at least, at a, at a minimum, five years on, on a review. Um, and I'm not going to support just having it open-ended with, with no review again, unless there's major complaints, because I don't think that's the way we should be operating any, any review processes in this town. I think if we're going to proceed on to discussion, we really need to have a motion on the floor. Nobody's made a motion yet. I move that the uh, item uh, 770102 uh, uh, be adopted uh, as written uh, relating to earth material removal standards. Second. And moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Well, Would it, it, to be, to, um, I mean, one of Jack's concerns is that, that the Murrays, for some reason, could say, well, we're going to sell and sell the property. Would it be appropriate to, to ask the Murrays as a part of policy if that the properties, either of these, or whatever, however many things there are, <laughs> that, that if your property goes on the, line, on the market and it is sold, that then we could then relook at this? I mean, is that, I mean, I, I know what Jack is saying, that it's not good to have it open-ended, but, but when we listen to the planner, we've been working in this system for a long time with the same family. But if this were, you know, John Smith, who moves in here from Connecticut, anyway, we might want to then look at this ordinance. Exactly. Um, so is it appropriate to say if the Murray's, it's hard for me to believe that it would ever be sold, but in the event that it was ever <laughs> yeah. sold, yeah, you know, that the they could... The manager has would like to address that. Is it appropriate? All, all permits go with the property. They don't go with the ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we don't regulate the owners of properties as, you know, for example, uh, uh, you know, if uh, someone, you know, gets a building True. permit for a house, then they sell it to someone else, True. the building permit for the house still stays in place. Yeah. But I, but I think the question was, is, you know, could the council, if the property was sold, uh, Relook at the order. Relook at the issue, and the answer is yes. Uh, if you, if at any time you wanted to reinstate any requirement for an annual permit or any type of a regulation, uh, you can do that. So, sure. you you could do it at any, at any given point, but you, you cannot. It doesn't. You couldn't do it automatically, just based on on a change of ownership, unless you amended the ordinance to read that. But again, that would be an exception from all our other ordinances in that all of our permits uh, go with uh, the ownership of the property. What we would want to look at with a change of property ownership, though, are the, the requirements for the insurance and uh, some of those issues uh, which would still need to be in place. And we would have to make sure that those were transferred to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Councilor Lynch. Um, I, I understand where um, you're coming from, Councilor. Um, Roberts and I, I'm sympathetic, but I'm also looking at um, how friendly we are to good businesses in this town. And um, the, the, the Murrays run a good business. I think everyone who's done business with them is um, respectful of that. And, and I guess I take comfort that the town council, as the town manager has explained, can always change the ordinance. So. I, I would like to see us go forward with it the way it's drafted and uh, knowing that we have the power um, within this body or some subsequent body to deal with any problems that may come along. And I, I would hope that, that would address your concern. I don't know that it addresses no, it. <laughs> no, not, not really, because I think we're setting a precedent that then other companies or other operations could ask the same type of consideration. And, and I, I, again, I don't think anybody here has any problems with the Murrays. Uh, you, you have to divorce the issue from who the current owner is when you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. Councillor Barry. Well, I think the planning board has uh, reviewed this and um, come to us with a unanimous recommendation in the past. And I think this is more in their barely work than ours, and uh, so I support the motion. Councillor Fritz, did you have a Well, I just... Um, wanted to mention the issue of ownership does seem to make a difference on how things are run because I was on the planning board when actually this was tightened up because we did get complaints on a pre with previous owner and I mean we had problems of blasting and doing damage to property we didn't have properly kept up fence you know the hours were a problem and um, 
signage and all kinds of things. I think those things have been tightened up over the years by changes in the regulation. Um, but they were complaint driven and that's and I think that we made it annual uh, review because of that previous owner. But um, so I'm I'm sympathetic to your concerns about maybe it being a five year you know, something like that. Any further discussion? Could, could I ask the town planner another question? Is there anything? Right? Did the planning board address that specific issue about the, the expiration date um, other than relationship to other ordinances? Did they specifically did discuss they? whether that it should be open ended or Yeah, they did. And and like I said, they they jumped right on it. Um, I was a little surprised because they tend to be very conservative about um, granting a lot of leeway to anyone. They are a very particular board about adhering to the standards in great detail. And they said, it's just like site plan review as far as they're concerned. Once you get an approval, we have a code enforcement officer who has, I mean, they're, they're comfortable because they have seen the code officer bring projects back to them because they have violated their their conditions of approval. So they felt that they had a level of trust that there are conditions now that talk about all the things that Councillor Fritz mentioned about hours of operation and type of blasting and the provision of fencing. And they felt comfortable that if, if those types of things were violated and it was brought to the attention of the code officer, that he would immediately act upon it. And that's why they, they said, look, we're comfortable treating this like we treat everything else. Does that answer your question, Council McGee? Yeah, yeah, okay. it does. Great. Thank you. Any further discussion? Then shall we move the question? Or wait a minute. It's been someone make a motion. Yeah. Yes. Let's move. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm losing it. Um, okay. Uh, all those in favor? Uh, Penny, are you up or down? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? It's six to one. Opposed? Six to one. Passes. Thank you. Sorry, Penny. <laughs> I tell you, I'm already got wake, my calendar up, up for the next workshop. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Could have voted for the wrong way. <laughs> thank you very much. So that was where we've got item number 78, a report from the Ordinance Committee regarding parking on Oakhurst Road. Ordinance Chair. Councillor Lynch, yes. Do you have anything Fine to say about this? <laughs> uh, yes, um, we had a citizen mm -hmm. request to um, look at the parking along um, Oakhurst Road, north of Waverly, um, when there are um, activities going on at St. Albans Church. The citizen was concerned that um, parking on both sides of the streets created a public safety. Um, problem, problem in that um, public safety vehicles such as uh, fire trucks and police cars would not be able to get through there. Um, the ordinance committee met in December um, after public notice and noticed two interested parties and neighbors. At the meeting we heard from the police chief as well as a representative from uh, St. Albans Church. It was the police chief's recommendation that the town adopt an ordinance prohibiting parking on the north side of Oakhurst Road, extending east from Waverly Road, approximately 400 feet. Um, the Ordinance Committee at that time reviewed photographs which showed that when there are large gatherings at St. Albans, parking on both sides of Oakhurst Road does create a public safety issue as emergency vehicles might indeed have a problem getting through from time to time. So we therefore recommend that the town adopt such an ordinance. Thank you. Do I hear a motion? Or Councilor McGinty. I move that we set this for a public hearing for Monday, February 11th, 2002 at 7.30 at the Cape of Town Hall. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much.
Moving on, item number 79, a report from the Planning Board regarding off-site parking, an off-site parking zone amendment. I move that we uh, refer this report to the Ordinance Committee. Second. And moved and seconded mm -hmm. to um, refer this to the Ordinance Committee. Any discussion? Do we have to accept the report? Do we? Can I, we do. Thank you, Councillor. Can I re yes, you raise my may. motion? Um, I move that we uh, refer, receive the report, and then refer to the Ordinance Committee a proposed yeah. amendment to Section 19-7-8 of the Zoning Ordinance to allow off-site parking in the BB zone up to one mile away. And who second? Councillor Fritz, is that amended, amended motion? Okay. You'll second. <laughs> you can no one be cares. <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, next item. Um, for those watching, we already considered item number 80. We took it out of order at the beginning of the meeting. So the next item will be item number 81, offer of land at U29-38, which is a lot near Stevenson Street for potential Greenbelt Link. Mr. McGovern? Yes, there was a letter from the property owner uh, in your parcel offering it to the town. There was also in your desk today uh, a recommendation from the Conservation Commission. Uh, they've already they've already looked at this and <laughs> unanimously re re recommended uh, that you accept it. Uh, I I'd recommend that you, you still adopt the motion uh, with the understanding that you probably get the Conservation Commission recommendation well prior to uh, March 1, 2002, and that way you'll have a chance to review it at your next meeting. Uh, we'll have maps that show where it is, uh, even more so. If you, had, you did have a map in there, but yeah. I, I, it wasn't presented as it was going to be finally voted on tonight. So I would suggest you uh, yeah. pass the motion as, uh, as drafted. Is okay. there any reason, Maureen, that the property owner should? The key is I'd like to do it by April 1 so that they don't get taxed on it again. It's only a small amount of tax. The commission is more willing to start working on the Okay. Do I have a motion? Do I hear Can a motion? We, do we have to? Can't we just accept it tonight, the whole thing? I don't think anybody's going to argue about accepting the parcel. Why delay it a month? Actually, I guess in light of all of the correspondence, telephone calls that I've received in the last couple of weeks on the um, some of the other land owned by the town, um, I'd like to examine it before we just accept a parcel of land. Uh, it takes it off the tax rolls. It does have ramifications. and. Right. We may accept it, but I'd like to I agree. have some chance to take a look at it. I'd like to know a little bit more about what I'm voting for. Very well. I'd just like to comment that it is on one of the trails. It is one of the um, number four trail connecting some important um, areas like from Canterbury over to Across 77, you know, I mean, there really are is that, some. Is that what this trail is? That's trail number yes. four? Yeah, that's a specific trail. It's not on this map that we just got for some reason. It's a, propo it's a proposed but trail. But it is on a, another okay. one. Thank you. Right, it is a proposed trail. So I think it's a significant parcel. Yes, it's worthwhile yeah. noting also that for those people who don't think we have any streets in Cape Elizabeth, there are three or four of them, and here they are. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. We have um, avenues and mm. roads. So, uh, a motion? I'd like to move that we um, refer this parcel to the Conservation Commission for review and recommendations. Second. And to get back to us by March 1st. Because there is a time sensitive. Right. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 82, uh, <coughs> from Joseph Fristacci, having to do with the Rosewood subdivision. 
Madam Chairwoman? Yes. <laughs> I would like to recuse myself from this particular issue. The, uh, this particular project as a whole, the, uh, my employer, the City of South Portland, the Council inserted themselves into the process when they uh, dead-ended two of the streets trying to prevent the, uh, the development and I work with one of the parties involved in this uh, as part of the neighborhood association, so I'd be extremely uncomfortable getting involved in it if I could be ex excused or recused or however you please. I, I, That's okay with me. <laughs> Is it okay with everybody else? It's okay with Penny, so. Mm. Um, I, you need a motion. Do we need a motion on this? Yeah, I think yeah, every counselor is supposed to, according to the charter, vote on every issue unless excused by fellow counselors okay. for a reason. So do I. Not true, Mr. That's right. So do I hear a motion to accept Councillor Roberts recusing oh, himself? Okay. I'm, I move based on the description from Councillor Roberts of his conflict of interest with item number 81 that he wishes to be recused. Um, it, I, I'm sorry, it was 82. 82. Number 82. Second. Right. <laughs> Couldn't but think of the last word I to say. I moved and seconded. All in favor? You have to think of it now. <laughs> John, you're not in favor? I don't like it. I'm, I don't, I don't think that's I didn't know if you were so. dreaming it's, or not. I, there's one, yeah. Wait a minute. One issue. All those in favor? Six. Six zero. It's unanimous. Okay. Um, so, Councillor Roberts is recusing himself. Do I hear a motion about accepting the deed? I'll move that uh, the Town Council accept the deed from Joseph Ustashi, which conveys full title to the land in the Rosewood subdivision, which was previously provided to the Town as an easement. Is there a second? Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Well, I'd just like to comment that when I was on the planning board in the early 80s, this pond and, uh, you know, the land around it was deemed to be, you know, very significant for this town. And it's taken a long time to get that pond uh, protected. And, and I'm just really glad to see it, it actually happening. So. Used to be called. Some of these pond. issues take a long, long Duck time. Pond. Right? Pardon? That was called Ledgewood Pond. Well, it was called it Duck, Duck Pond back then. Oh, okay. That there was, was never a duck there, but it was <laughs> always called the <a> Duck Pond. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Councilor McGinty. Um, and just in reference to the letter from our attorney regarding um, dated December 31st, 2001, regarding the description, the deed description states that it's an easement and he said the attorney says might cause some confusion is that I haven't seen a revised deed but that was observed and we the, the final deed that will accept will have the language uh, acceptable to the town attorney that's as he's right okay and just to clarify in my mind we currently have an easement over that property and he's deeding the property to us that's, right. that's essentially what's happening right so we'll own it right I just wanted to make sure. With okay. the conservation restrictions that were previously on it remaining. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No? All those in favor? 6-0. It's unanimous. Thank you. Come on back, Jack. <laughs> Item number 83, confirmation of protected properties on the historic resources list. Anybody need to say anything about this? Do I hear a motion? I move we accept the list as presented on 83-01-02. Do I hear second. a second? I'm sorry. Wait. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I hear none. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Whoops, sorry. Item number 84, report from Fort Williams Advisory Commission regarding rentals of the bandstand and stone gazebo. Okay, Mr. Uh, Betty Crane of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission is here. Should you have any questions on this item uh, or the next one? But this is in keeping with your desire to uh, have Fort Williams Park uh, to be uh, more self-supporting and less of a burden on the tax base, as well as to accommodate individuals who would like to reserve these particular areas. OK. 
Okay. Do I hear a motion? I, Madam Chair, I, I move to approve the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to add two sites which may be reserved in Fort Williams Park for a fee, the bandstand and the stone gazebo, and to set the following reservation fees, namely Cape Elizabeth residents $35 per half day, non-residents $50 per half day, and business groups $50 per half day, and including a minimal security deposit of $25. Second. Which is refundable. Refundable. If there's no if, damage. Thank you. If no damage or cleanup. <laughs> thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? <laughs> Betty, would you like to say something? Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Smart, Betty. Smart. At this hour, you don't talk. I'm sorry. Did I cut you off? I'm losing my faculties here. Um, item number 85. Um, recommendations from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Um, having to do with requests for the use of the park. I'll move, move that uh, the council approve the following uses of Fort Williams Park in 2002 with the events to be conducted in conformance with the Fort Williams Park use property and subject to conditions set for by uh, set for them by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. I think there's a, a typo there. Yeah, it should be policy rather than property. I'm sorry, where? Yeah, you're right, you're right, where? Council Barry. It's up to conditions set by the Foley Advisory Commission. Okay. Uh, and uh, the uh, Kite Days sponsored by Northern Sky Toys is March 31st, April 20th, June 16th, uh, September 7th, and October 13th. <clears throat> those who want to fly kites. People's Beach to Beacon Road race set up August 1st and August 2nd. People's Beach to Beacon Road race August 3rd. Multiple sclerosis walk on April 7th. Labor Day weekend art show September 1 or for a rain day if, if raining September 2nd. And the New Hampshire Pyrotechnic Association September 22nd. Thanks. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Sir, point of information. The Portland Symphony met with us last week, and they're looking at July 1, and that'll be before the Portland Advisory Commission on Thursday night. Okay. Thursday. It's been moved and seconded. Um, my packet didn't have any backup information on the New Hampshire Pyrotechnic Association. Did <coughs> others have that? or? <laughs> I mean, maybe if, I would if you understand. if you know something about it, please um, enlighten us. You get to speak after all. <laughs> it was approved last year by Betty Crane. It was approved last year and was canceled uh, or postponed until this year. It's something that they come and practice. Uh, and involves, I believe, our fire department. Bob Malley has looked into it quite carefully. So. Okay. That's about all I know. If I had my minutes with me, I could tell you a little bit more. I'm sorry. Do they shoot fireworks? <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Is that, would it be open to the public, or would they close the park? Pardon? Would it be open to the public, or might they close the no, park? They, during the day. It's during the no, day. it's during the day. Practice thing. If there's anybody in the park, yes, but they rope off the area that they're going to use. And the Fort Williams advisor well, maybe recommended this, right? So, yeah. Check it out. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? 7 0. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much for hanging in there and waiting this long. Okay, item number 86, having to do with a quick playing deed for One Pine Point Road. Ms. Lane. Madam Chairman, I've moved. Oh, this. Never mind. Uh, never mind. Ms. Lane doesn't need to say anything. Would you like to make a motion? Sure. 
uh, did I interrupt somebody? No, that's okay. Oh. We're, we're all set. Um, I move that uh, the uh, council vote to uh, authorize the town manager to sign a quit claim deed for property located at one Pine Point Road, which is a tax map U35-005-027. Uh, Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? I have a question for the town clerk. This, this has been brought up to date, is that correct? Everything's, according to the... It, mm. Everything has been up to date, all the past sewer charges and real estate taxes to the town and also the Portland Water District has been up, has been brought up um, as well to date. Okay, so that, that was going to be my question based on this. I talked to oh. them this afternoon. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Councilor Berry? No, no question? I move the question. Okay, let's move the question. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. 7 0. Yeah, did you stop? Um, item number 87, the Capital Improvement Program. Do you need to say anything, Mr. McGovern? Okay. A motion? I move that we receive the proposed Capital Improvement Program for 2003 through 2007. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. <laughs> Councilor Robert. A uh, question to the town manager, I believe. On these Capital Improvement, we're listing how much we're supposedly would be adding to the, uh, to spend on the capital improvement projects each year. Is there any way of including on something like this what we're retiring in debt those same years? Or am I, is that? We could easily put a, none of this is proposed to be borrowed. This is ongoing operating expense. Just in the operating. But we could very easily include in this a, a, a debt service schedule. It may not need to be an official record, but I'd, I'd like to just get a better sense of where we're at. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. 7-0. Thank you in very fact, much. If I could follow up on what Jack said, on, um, perhaps the council could ask the manager for an updated, based on, um, maybe that's what he just said, to give us, based on now that we're going to bond another uh, 1 million, 1.5 million that um, we could take another look at our bonds, I want to say policy, it's not policy, it's, it's a policy that we approved several years ago. Um, yeah. Was that actually ever approved? It's been I, it, around. No, it was approved. Was it approved? Yes, it was. Um, that we maybe take a look at our current status based on what our policy was when we voted on it three years ago, something like that. If, and that's a, a recommendation to the chair if we could, mm -hmm. could maybe update that information. Okay. Um, that's good what to me if it's fine with the chair. Too. I'll, I'll tell you I when. I'll, right. I'll, I'll get the information and I'll tell you when. In his files somewhere. I'm seeing it and reading it. Okay, any citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? <laughs> Better hurry. You're not. <laughs> um, we, we do need to stay just for a few minutes to schedule a few things, counselors, but that doesn't need to be on TV. And do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved and seconded. So moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you.